Uh, we're going to spend a little time this morning talking to you about, about funding and sustaining an LA program. But there's a, there's a real challenge here in that what works at one institution may not work at another institution. And so your local context really matters. You are going to have to work with your local people, your administrators, to, to make this work. And so what, what you hear working at, an, at one institution isn't necessarily going to work at another institution. However, something that can work for everybody, and you, you definitely want to write this, this next thing down, is uh, the lot of numbers. Okay, here they are. Right? <laughs> no. Obviously, that's not, not a way to fund a program. So uh, what we're going to do is, is share a couple of examples, but also strategies with how you can approach funding and sustaining an LA program at your institution. And I'll, I'll talk up first about NDSU, and then later it's going to talk about, about the, the context at, at FIU. So uh, just to give you some background about NDSU, about 10 years ago, we had a cluster hire for uh, a set of discipline-based education researchers. And they, they were going to be focused in three departments, in biological sciences, chemistry and biochemistry, and physics. And so we had about six faculty were hired as part of this cluster hire. And there was a physics education researcher that, that was hired who was aware of the LA model. It certainly was pretty common in, in physics departments, at least at that time. And so he was aware of it. And so about this time, about 10 years ago, uh, there, oh, well, actually this is about eight years ago now, these people are on campus. So we got this cluster of, of discipline-based education researchers. And the, this cluster of faculty get together and they, and they say, look, there's a strategic plan for the College of Science and Mathematics. And one item on that strategic plan is to increase the quality of teaching within the college. And so the, a group of faculty, there was one from biological sciences, one from chemistry and biochemistry, and then this uh, one from the physics who said, look, if this is the strategic plan, let's go to the dean and say the LA model, which we're aware of, might be a way to address this. So they put together put together a one-page proposal saying the goal of the strategic one of the goals of the strategic plan is to improve the quality of teaching. We propose that to address this goal, we provide an LA program that would support our, our intro level, our gateway, high enrollment courses. And so they took this one pager to the dean, and, and the dean said, okay, I'll give you some pilot money. Let's see what you, let's see what you can do. And so as part of that pilot money, it was, it was about $30,000, they went to the Boulder LA workshop. In fact, it was seven years ago uh, that, they, that they went. So this team of three faculty went to the Boulder workshop, LA workshop, and they came back and they put together a, well, they developed the plan while they were at the Boulder workshop, and they came back and said, okay, here's, here's our starting of a, 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 excuse me, of an LA program. And so they, um, wait, wait um, uh, so anyway, they came back, they started the program, they, they uh, offered uh, uh, um, with just a few courses in the spring 2012 semester, they, they put some LAs and began to work on the structure for um, a more robust program. So now that we're into fall 2012, we actually have a new dean comes to town, right? Administrators change. So we have a new dean comes to town. And that we, we're aware that this, this pilot money, this $30,000, is not going to be around forever. And so now we need to... to uh, begin to see what the impact is. And so data starts to come in. So we're, we're going to look at the, the coin of the realm. And at our institution, it's DFW rates. Our state funding for our university system and for individual universities is based on our retention rates and DFW rates. 
And so that becomes the metric of choice. Now, I, I realize that that is not an ideal uh, metric, right? There's some, some flaws in that. But because it's directly tied to state funding, that's something that administrators pay attention to. So we, saw, we were able to show some initial data where our DFW rates are shifted. And we approach the new dean. And now I've come on board. I wasn't on board originally, but I've, I've now come on board. And this new dean sees our DFW rates, how they've shifted. I'll show you some of the data here in a little bit. And says, OK, we need to make this a component of our college. I'm going to allocate funding for this. Um, I want to engage this more broadly within the college, not just three departments. Um, but I also want departments to invest in this. And so I'm going to require that departments provide a match. The college will provide some money, but I expect the departments also to put some skin in the game. And so that was what really launched our, our program and allowed us to not only sustain, but to really grow. The very first semester of fall 2012, we had 15 L LAs across a couple of departments. Now we're, we're, we're this, like this current semester, we have, have 75 LAs. I know that's really small compared to the FIU situation, but we're, we're a much smaller institution. And so we have 75 in, in, in about nine different departments, including things like accounting, which isn't a part of our college, but uh, we have LAs there. And we also have LAs in an architecture course. Um, we, uh, so our, our base model for our program is the, the, the college, the dean's office where I work, provides funding for LAs to departments if they'll provide a match. So essentially, we're splitting the cost of, of an LA. In addition, I have been able to supplement our our funding model with, with grants. So I'm on an NSF project with, with Laird, Hagit, and, and Laurel. And as we are trying to investigate the impact of LAs, I'm able to, to use some of the, those grant dollars to fund some LAs. We actually have another NSF project that's focused on faculty development on our campus that's providing additional funds to support LAs so that faculty can transform their courses. So we're, we're, we have local funds that we're using um, in concert with department funds and then supplementing that with, with grant dollars to make our program work. Uh, our, our dean is fully committed to our, our program. Um, he's extremely satisfied with um, the, the, the performance of courses. I'll show you some of the data hopefully um, here in a minute. Um, and uh, more importantly, he loves to showcase what our impact is to his boss, the provost, and is able to highlight and say, look what we're working on at the college. Because the DFW rates are so important, it's what the administrators are talking about, that's what he's able to show, look, we are, we are moving in the right direction. Now, I would tell you that we don't, it's not perfectly solid, right? Our DFW rates are, are, not, are not zero because there's lots of factors, right, that contribute to that. Um, but we definitely have uh, improvement. And so what I want to show you, maybe, well, can you all come up to this, look at this one screen? <laughs> well, is that appropriate to do? <laughs> yeah. So what I what I want to sh what, uh, what I'm trying to show you is uh, our our DFW rates. Um, maybe it's going to come. Um, and so uh, so the primary courses that we focus on because there are high enrollment courses are our intro biology sequence. So bio one, bio two, our intro general chem or you know our general chemistry sequence. Uh, uh, um, first and second semester. And I also wanted to show you, hopefully, some, some data uh, with, for our math courses. Um, so I guess I could just tell you these things. So uh, our, our courses, our intro bio courses, um, we had our first semester go from about a 34% DFW rate down to a 24% DFW rate. And 
you know, that's about a 10% shift, right? But that ends up being hundreds of students that we're talking about. And I think that we can talk about these percentages broadly, but um, we have to remember that those percentages are, are referring to students. Like, there are individual students' lives that are at stake here, and I, I think that's a really important thing to, to, to notice. Our, um, we also had our second semester gen buy, of course, go from 26% down to about 13%. Uh, and so th those are pretty significant drops. And these are those <laughs> intro-level courses, those gateway courses that are gateways to the major. These are, cor these are courses that are going to determine wh whether or not a student persists, right, is retained within the university. And so that, that's, those are pretty significant reductions. The one I, the one I really want to show you, because it's really dramatic, but I'll just talk about it, I guess, is in, in our calculus courses. So we had a math department who, for, for many years, was like, we're fine. We got this. Don't worry about us, right? Uh, we, have our own, we have our own tutoring program. It's all good. You know, we're doing fine. The, the, the DFW rate in, in our, our calculus courses is very high. It's like 43% okay, on average. So to me, that's not fine, right? Uh, the math, um, a, a failure in a math class is actually the biggest predictor of leaving a university. And so, uh, so, so something's not right about math. And so, so uh, you probably know that change happens in higher education, one retirement at a time. And so we had a, a department chair retire. And we had a new department chair who was like, yes, we, we, we need to have an LA program. We need to do things differently. We're not serving our students well. And so he identified a couple of faculty who were interested, who also taught calculus. We have um, a couple of different calculus classes. We have our calculus for business students. We have our calculus for life science majors. And we also have our sort of traditional calculus for engineering um, students. And where uh, we were able to connect with faculty who taught those three courses. And the, the, the really dramatic change uh, comes from our business calculus course, where the historic uh, DFW rate is about 43%. And we just, in the spring 2018 semester, just last semester, that was our first opportunity to use LAs. And that DFW rate dropped down to 17%. That's huge, right? And also, I just want to stress, like, that's a lot of students. Like, these are individual students who were changed. And of course, the argument can some, is sometimes about, oh, well, the course, you probably made the course easier, right? You made the course easier. That, that is not the case. We don't have the data yet, but we will have the data where we begin to look at, okay, how do these students do in the future? Oh, something happened. Okay, good. Okay, so stop right there for a minute. Who's who's controlling it? Peggy, thank you. So, uh, so here's the, this. Here's the visualization that will that will uh, hopefully uh, allow you to see this more clearly. So, on the left we have our gen bio sequence. On the right, our general chemistry sequence for first and second semester. So you can see the the dip. Okay, Peggy, the one I really want to show you was this this math. And so, the n next slide for me. Um, and so on the left, we have our business calculus. On the right, that's our second semester of traditional calculus, you know, calculus for, for, for engineers and physics, et cetera. And we see also an increase in math. Now, this is uh, the, the, the with LAs is only based on, on spring 2018 data because I had, there was such resistance within, within math. But now that they're, they're on board and they see this dramatic, I actually was just a couple weeks ago sharing this with the, the, the math department chair and the dean, and it's sort of like, okay, you, like, we're on the right track. We're making progress. We can, we can, we can do this. Um, these end up, of course, this is just an individual instructor for the with LA sections because um, we had we have to start small. That's often how how it's, it starts. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can see. So it's like 
you know, before LA is 31 to 21. It's about a 10% drop there. And if anybody wants these data, I'll happily share them. Yeah? I'm just curious what approximately are the ends for these two? Yeah, so uh, I don't include them because they, they uh, confuse the confuse administrators, right? So um, <laughs> the, we're talking about thousands of students in, in these. You know, so yeah, like a, 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 a for in a particular semester, you know, we're talking about, oh, it'd be, you know, six to eight hundred students in a particular semester, but, but so multiply that by, you know, um, you know, 15 to 17 semesters. How about your math one? Yeah, so the, 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 the math one, go ahead, Higgy. So the, 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 um, <laughs> The with LAs are, are only hundreds, you know, hundreds of students, as opposed to the with LAs is thousands of students because of the, the, the long-term nature of that. Huge, it's pretty huge, yeah, yeah. And the thing that I always stress is that, um, you know, uh, the, the ends do matter in that, even an N of one matters, right? It, particularly if you're that one student. And I, don't, I know we don't always think that way. Um, we tend to think in the aggregate, but man, if we're that one student who interacted with an LA and persisted, that is really powerful. Why this matters, though, I want to stress is these are data that then go to administrator and administrators, and we can now talk in terms of potential for lost revenue. So, if a student takes this math 144 in their first semester of college, and they fail it, and then they decide, look, I, maybe this university thing, I'm, maybe college isn't for me. Then think about those semesters of tuition that are potentially lost if that student doesn't re-enroll. Re -enroll. However, if the student comes in we provide the LA support, the courses transform to focus on student learning, and that student passes and then continues on. That revenue is retained, and that's what we want to pay attention to, and particularly provosts and presidents uh, res uh, resonate. I've heard the CU Boulder uh, provost say this. He invests about 900000 in the LA program at CU Boulder. And I, I'm not going to be able to recall the, the math, but maybe the rest of you will help me with this. But he says that if the LA program can contribute a 1% increase in retention, that translates into at least a million. I think it's more because I don't know the actual number. It's 3 million. Thank you, Manher, for remembering. That 1% increase in retention translates to $3 million in, in tuition revenue. So his outlay of 900,000 is a fraction of that 3 million in, in recaptured revenue. Those are important numbers, and every institution has those numbers. You probably don't have those numbers for institution. But there are people on campus who likely would know that information, and that's really relevant because this initial expense of starting an LA program, maintaining an LA program, is going to get recouped uh, down the road with respect to retention. So that's an argument that maybe doesn't work well with, with, with faculty and when thinking about your own individual courses, but when thinking about going back to your institution, working with others, uh, your, your, your colleagues, but also administrators, those are arguments that, that, that work with them. All right, yeah. So um, I do understand that you're assuring us that the uh, course is not becoming easier. Yeah. I have a simple question. So I teach Bio 1. Yeah. Is it fair to say that there is a metric that is consistent? I mean, in my sure. courses, exams are what the sure. dominant grade, post sure. the grade is. Is it something you're keeping the same? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in those courses that you just saw, we actually use concept inventories. So we do pre-post concept inventories. And in fact, we're, we're seeing gains on our pre-post concept inventories with respect to student learning uh, prior, th then compared to without LA. So, so not only are we seeing this reduction in DFW rates, we're seeing an increase in learning gains on, 
on um, their content inventory. So the actual content. Okay. Yeah. Justin, and say that on the LA website and the other section about Lasso, your students could take the content inventories there, and then the Boulder program or this the the Lasso program, program. Is, yeah gives you the data back. So there are several content inventories. I w I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight uh, J Jason. Make sure everybody's wave wave Jason. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. So everybody see J Jason actually works on the Lasso project, and this this is a project. You should talk with him if you're interested in this. Uh, this is a, 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 a way for your students to complete the concept inventory online, and Lasso actually will generate. If if you have students take it pre to post, begin the semester, end the semester. It'll generate a report for you at the end of the semester so you can actually document those learning gains. Yeah. Uh, one thing I also want to mention that just because uh, I need to turn over to Laird is uh, this this is a really interesting set of data that we're exploring right now. Uh, there was a, a paper that came out in I think I think 2017 from from a, a from a handful of, of research universities in, in the Big Ten. Uh, there was like five or six universities that looked at that looked at these data, and they they looked at a metric called average grade anomaly, and the way that this is determined is is um, you you identify a course, let's say bio one, and uh, you use what's called a GPAO, which is the grade point average for all other courses, and you compare it to the grade earned by a student in that target course. So for example, I'm a student in Gen Bio 1, and I earn a B. And then I have all these other courses, right? So that, and then I take the, the GPA for all those other courses. Let's say it's a 3.5. And then what I'm looking for is what's the anomaly? What's the difference between the, the grade in that target course and the and the average grade in all the other courses, and in this case, that's a average grade. In, oh, that's a grade anomaly of, of negative 0.5. And what what the, the what these folks discovered is that STEM courses often offer a grade penalty. Okay, so students typically do worse in their STEM course compared to all the other courses that they take, which in fact could include other STEM courses, but. But the, when the target course is a STEM course, they, 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 it offers a, a great penalty. We think that's really interesting. And so we tried to replicate this at NDSU because the, what the work was doing was seeing are there different, are there gender performance differences? That's what the GPD stands for. Meaning, do courses provide a larger penalty to female students versus male students? In the, in the original uh, paper, they actually reported at those Big Ten universities that the STEM courses were providing a larger grade penalty to female students than male students. We have this fascinating thing happening in NSU where, in fact, our female students are having less of a penalty than, than the male students. We don't fully understand why that is, but... Uh, then there are probably multiple factors, but what we're looking for to see here, and this is what it's showing us, is is um, in the upper left, if, there, if a course, these were actually represent average grade anomalies for specific courses, what we're looking to see is in our LA supported classes, which are the green classes, we're looking to see how much of a grade penalty is there, and there, and there typically is a grade penalty, um, but if it's um, if in the upper left quadrant it's telling us that females have a slightly less of a grade penalty, if it's in the lower left corner, males have a slightly less uh, grade penalty. So our, our, our courses actually um, slightly favor females. Um, but this is a, a metric that we're actually using to try to get a sense of how are different populations, subpopulations of students being impacted by the LA program with the intent that no subpopulation would get this advantage. We believe that the LA program can actually encourage different sub, subpopulations to engage in, in a course. And so this is actually a new metric that we're, we're investigating. And I just want to share it like, hey, this is something to be thinking about because if your administrators care about these different issues, these are data approaches that you can use to support that. that um, so what I want to do is really kind of give you guys a chance to think about things. And I'll say a couple of kind of key things. 
about how we think about it. And I'm not going to talk a lot because uh, we started a little bit late, so we want to give the opportunity for other groups to be uh, here and not hold you guys late. So we start with the LA program in spring 2008. We start with seven LAs in physics. It grew into math and chemistry and earth science, and then biology added, and then it just went all over the place. And so yes, mostly this one of the standard thing that happens is we get a grant, and that starts something, and then we have to find a way to institutionalize it, and the way we do that is by evidence. As you can see, we have very compelling evidence on the screen. We have the before picture, and we have the after picture. There's some very important outcomes. Okay, so it's 10 times better after, and this is actually a specific graph made for administrators because <laughs> I don't want to be in trouble soon. Um, this is what they like to see. Um, and so we try to think about the improvement in things and how, how change happens. And so, you know, in the state of Florida, we have this opportunity and, and uh, insanity of uh, performance metrics, and so those are a driver. Yes, the 1% increase in retention translates to $3 million has been used on this campus to help promote and sustain and continue the LA program. I would say that the key has always been and will always be kind of the partnerships that we have with the LAs, the profound experiences that we get with LAs. You saw some yesterday when we started. You'll see some and yesterday afternoon, and then you'll see some later today. It's the profound excitement of the faculty being really committed and what they say when they interact with deans and chairs. It's the chairs promoting because they realize it's improving their metrics and their staffs within their department to get the deans off their backs. It's the deans who are talking to the provost to say, here's what we're doing in our college to promote and improve things. It's also a key thing that you see the first line on the sheet that you have says, it's really about the relationships that you have and maintain. And I, think it's, and I would argue that it's really about the, maintain, the relationships you maintain with the LA so that they're actually being effective in the classroom, as well as the faculty, chairs, administrators, and that the trust you have to build to make this all happen. Right. And it is also challenging in, this, in data land because you know a concept inventory is really great for me because I know what it's measuring. But there are those who might not believe that. Oh, I can change the DFW rates tomorrow by just changing my grades. That's true. So how do you make sure you keep fidelity and um, yeah. to the model? What you know, what should be expectations in the course? So there's some discussions that we have to think about.